welcome back to my channel my name is amy if you're new here and today we're gonna go through some 2023 fashion trends and i'm gonna give my opinion did i like them did i not like them did i participate them did i manage to find them thrifted all that good stuff so it's gonna be a long rambly video i'm gonna include pictures of the trends so you can kind of visualize them if you can't picture them yourself if that makes sense and be able to dive straight into it I got all of these from the Alexa Sunshine 83 video on 2023 trends and um, I picked out some of the ones I feel like are more that happened in the UK as well as in America because I feel like some trends do only stick in certain places um, and I'm not wearing my glasses so it's going to be a bit tricky to read them but the first one is the Mischief Red Boots I think Mischief is the brand but you guys know what boots I'm talking about it's the giant red space looking boots um i don't like them if i'm being honest i don't like them i think they're cool and i feel like they are like a statement piece but they were never meant to be cool really are, were they were they ever actually meant to be wearable i don't think so um but they are fun um and i feel like it was funny um and as like an art piece i feel like they were cool but one you can't thrift them two they were out of fashion so quickly i feel like a lot of people didn't like them to start off with and I thought that lends itself to then the fashion the trend dying out within like days I feel like it was quite a short-lived trend and also saying you can't find a jeep off but I thought this is a bit of like a jokey one to start off with was there people out there that actually like them I don't know let me know but was that the start of the red trend I don't know we'll go back onto that later um so the second trend I want to talk about is sheer clothing this one's a lot more day to day I feel like we see people wear this trend um but it's also a trend that I feel like is really not wearable I love the trend and to be fair I do have my mesh leopard print dress I mean that's a sheer piece of clothing and for Glastonbury I wore just a set of underwear underneath um so you can see the underwear kind of popping out um but then I feel like a lot of times I wear that dress I do layer like more underneath it now so it's not sheer anymore um I think it's a really cool trend um it's a trend that I didn't see many plus size people um participate in um but I feel like it's a cool trend and I was chat shopping yesterday and it was actually in my comfort with me which you would have seen before this video where I saw this lovely lace top and I was like I know someone would style that with nothing underneath and it look amazing unfortunately I'm not comfortable to do that um and I feel like is it socially acceptable yet to go out with your nipples out as a woman I'm not sure if it is um as in I wish it was and power to the people that do it but like would you get kicked out of somewhere I don't know I don't know I like the trend um and I feel like there's ways to make it more wearable I think my friend Penny has a pair of lace trousers that she styles with like a dress over top and um, it's kind of the skirt over dress no skirt over trousers trend which I kind of like um and she started like that and I was like yes that makes sense because it the trousers then acted like tights I suppose and it, it just worked um so in that terms I feel like with sheer clothing if you're layering it on top of it I can kind of understand it um so yeah I do love the trend and somewhat participated in it with my mesh dress but not in like the lace way I see it style quite a lot which I do I do really love um the next trend I've got on here is Adidas Sambas and I feel like there was quite a lot of trainer trends in 2023 um there was some tiger ones as well I can't remember what brand they were I feel like a lot of trainers came into style and as you guys know I'm not very good at keeping up with the shoe trends and actually only recently have I started wearing nicer shoes because always just a trainers crocs sort of gal um whereas now I've got into like boots and stuff like that and that it's all down and Hannah always tells me she didn't bully me for this I feel she bullied me for my shoe choices and um don't go give me a hate because it made me a better person um but I feel like the trainer trends are again a trend a bit like the red boots that's so specific if you buy that one trainer that is trendy we all like i remember when i was in probably year eight and the trend was either superstars and everyone had superstars then cut to a year later they're not trendy anymore and i feel like it's one of them very specific things they're very recognizable trainers and the ones are super trendy and like the way the adidas sambas were they were literally everywhere and i feel like if you participated in that because it was a trend you're not gonna like them 
a year on whereas if you find trainers style that fits with your style that is comfortable for you to wear and all that sort of thing and you find trainers that just work for you personally i don't know i feel like trainers are a bit like the whole jeans thing and they shouldn't be trends they should just be the shoes that you like to wear and that are comfortable in terms of trainers um yeah i don't know i didn't buy any i didn't i saw a couple in charity shops but i do think they were thriftable um but i don't know i feel like trainers are so specific that they tend to come in and out quite quickly a next trend is a trend that i participated in kind of towards the end of november into december i really discovered it and that is bows you guys know I got obsessed with bows um, and I absolutely love them. I've made a couple with scrap fabric. And in fact, I don't think I've brought any, but I brought one bow from the Lanzarote charity shop. Um, that's the only bow I've purchased. All the rest of them I've just made with scrap fabric. And I feel like that is one of the great things about the bow trend is that most people will have stuff in their house they could make a bow with whether that's scrap material even if you know when you get a piece of clothing that has that kind of like little strap to keep on the hanger make bows out with that packaging um like gift wrapping um the little ribbon that comes around pre-made cakes like ribbons are everywhere so it's such an easy trend to participate in and i feel like it adds that extra level as i've been saying the whole throughout 2023 I've really been trying to accessorise more and really style my outfits. And I feel like bows are such an easy way to bring that outfit up to the next level. Um, and I just think they're really cute. I said over Christmas, I felt like I was dressing a bit like a schoolgirl um, in terms of like bows, Mary Janes, frilly socks. And I feel like all of them sort of things were kind of in in 2023. Um, and I love it. I love kind of dressing up an outfit like that. I feel like if you've got an outfit that's more edgy or grungy, adding in bits like that will then bring that kind of feminine touch back. And I just, I really love it. Um, I didn't accessorise much with bows, like on bags and on shoes and things like that. But I feel like that's something that I may do as we go into kind of spring, summer. I don't know how long the bow trend's lasting, but I feel like bows is one of the things that may just stay. I feel like there's some trends that come in and go and I feel like that's when they're like hyper specific. Whereas I think things like bows are things that people have always worn, um, but they just became really super popular. I feel like bows may be one of them things that just stays um, and just becomes a bit of a constant um, because they're an easy way to accessorize. And I feel like hair accessories as a whole have become more popular. But again, they're something that's never left. So I feel like then it's more likely to stay. The next trend, which was super popular kind of during summer, is the whole jorts trend. So they're kind of long, baggy shorts, normally denim. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if it's specifically denim um, that was trendy. But this silhouette, I just don't think is for me. I didn't, to be honest, try it um, because I didn't see any in the charity shop. However, I do think it's something you could probably find in maybe more vintage shops rather than charity shops. Um yeah, I don't think it's for me. I feel like going along, which is going to something we're going to talk about. Oh, actually, no, I haven't got this on to talk about today. But kind of the, the bloquette, the whole bloke core cool situation. I feel like that came, kind of came hand in hand. I think they look comfortable and that is great. And to be fair, my most recent pair of denim shorts that I love, I got from Latham Street. And they're not very, they're not super long, but they are longer. They're probably like only just above my knee and they're baggy. They're not tight. And I feel like we have kind of moved on from the super kind of short hot pant denim shorts look that I used to love I used to walk around with half my bum hanging out every summer at every situation I always wore my super short denim shorts and I used to love them but let's be real they give you a wedgie front and back like denim shorts they're really tight and really short aren't comfortable so I feel like for the jorts trend to come in then, I feel like it made sense. They're the comfier option. And I feel like a lot of fashion trends were leaning towards more comfort rather than like super, I don't know, not stylish, but I feel like the comfort became quite key in clothing. I think ever since COVID, it's been that way that people want to be comfortable either and still look cute. So I feel like that's something that naturally happened anyway. But I didn't participate in the jorts trend. I have some shorts that definitely are baggier and longer but nowhere near the jorts trend and i just feel like people style it up so well but i just don't think that one's for me um just because i feel like i do dress for the male gaze and i'm aware of that and i know i don't know if that should be a problem you know i'm aware of it and i do tend to lean more dressing for the male gaze like dressing with tighter clothing more revealing maybe but 
I don't know, I feel like the jorts trend is really flipping that on its head and wearing like baggier silhouettes. And I feel like that then comes on to quite a lot that the whole people who are plus size have been always told to kind of cover their body. And I feel like I tend to try and go the opposite way and I feel a lot more comfortable in tighter silhouettes than I do in baggier silhouettes. And I don't know if that's because I grew up with that was what I was confident in and it stayed that way. I don't know, I feel like the really oversized looks that aren't flattering, I don't gravitate towards as much. But then I also feel like that potentially is because I've got it in my head that bigger people shouldn't be wearing that, which is wrong. Um, but I do also think it comes back to me dressing for the male gaze and dressing in tighter outfits. I don't know. That's a lot of psychological thing just for jorts. But um, jorts, yeah, not necessarily my thing, but I like them on other people and feel like if I saw a person wearing a pair of jorts, I'd be like, wow, they are a cool person. <laughs> Um, the next thing I've got is silver metallic shoes. These were everywhere and I have seen on 2024 trend predictions that it's going to lean into more gold and gold metallic will become the in kind of metallic this season. I don't know, the next year then we're going to have copper. Is it going to all go back to copper again? Who remembers that? Um, anyway, silver metallic shoes. Now I'm not necessarily a silver metallic person just because I feel like I lean towards more warm tones than cool tones, like grey doesn't really suit me in colours like that. However, I feel like the silver metallic shoe trend was a vibe. Um, I feel like, again, a lot of people would have bought into it and then won't be wearing it in 2024. Um, but I feel like if you were missing that sort of like nicer, dressier shoe that you could spruce up an outfit with, then I feel like the silver metallic shoe is great for that. Um, but I feel like a lot of people would have brought into it because it was a micro trend and then won't wear it again. And I feel like that's kind of a running theme with all of these trends and trying to shop trends sustainably is tricky. And I feel like I've been quite outspoken about how I do really like trends and do participate in trends. But I do think... I'm getting more conscious of stepping back and analysing if I actually like the trend or not and if the trend will fit in my wardrobe. And I came to the conclusion for the silver metallic shoe that no, it probably won't because I lean towards more gold. I feel like silver bags are cool. In fact, Amy got me a silver bag for Christmas and I love that. And actually I pinned a silver bag, not pinned, I favourited a silver bag on vintage because there is a couple of like my nicer dresses that have a silver beading through and then i would then lean silver um and a couple of my belts have got silver buckles and stuff like that so there's room for silver in my wardrobe but i'm not sure enough to get a pair of silver shoes um but i did thrift a pair of gold metallic cowboy boots so when i saw that gold metallic may be coming in i thought well, how convenient because i've really got some gold cowboy boots um but when I purchased them, like, you guys know I love my gold cowboy boots. I think they are gorgeous. But when you compare them to my real leather Wrangler cowboy boots, you can see how much being a trend makes companies produce absolutely terrible shoes. Because my gold cowboy boots are the flimsiest, like, feeling shoe. They are so terribly made. And I love them. And I'm wearing them quite a lot because they are quite comfy. Um... But they are terribly made and I don't see them lasting very long. When I pull them up by the little hooks on the side, like they feel like they're going to break every time. And I thought that just goes to show that when these trends are coming in and out so fast, fast fashion brands are making these terrible, make like they're making terrible versions of these trends and then they are just breaking. And that's why trends are getting such a bad rep because I feel like there's so many trends coming in that if you want to keep up with them you kind of have to go to fast fashion um and that's why i think thrifting trends is great because you actually have to sit there and think about them for a while and also most trends have already come and gone so you can normally find them in the charity shops the next two trends i'm going to kind of bulk into one so it's off the shoulder tops and then off the shoulder like jumpers sweaters um i love this trend I never liked off the shoulder silhouettes on me for the longest time and I feel like knowing what you like and you don't like in terms of shape is really important especially when you are getting influenced by trends you can say hold on a second that's never looked good on me why am I just going to try and jump into it now because it looks good on other people um but I do think off the shoulder I've then warmed to more and more and now i actually do quite like off the shoulder silhouettes and i have been looking for an off the shoulder preferably red top i saw one in oxfam but it was a size 10 and i was like 
even though it's a stretchy it's not going to be stretchy enough um but i am definitely on the hunt with one of them i would really like it to be red and i feel like if i saw one in black i potentially get it but i feel like um i am kind of holding out for a red one um i thought these are cute a lot of people say that they're not super practical because if you're wearing a jumper or a long sleeve you it would probably be too cold to have this part of you cover like uncovered but as you guys know, I'm constantly hot. So actually having something that's kind of long sleeve, but actually have half my top half of my body showing is probably quite good for me. Um, so that is something I'm looking for and hope to find in the charity shop. Again, I think it should be one that's relatively easy to thrift. Um, since I've been looking out, I actually haven't really gone charity shopping that much, but I do think I will be able to find one. And again, if it takes me a long time, it will definitely solidify in my head if I actually like it or if it's just because it's a trend. Um, but I'm buying into it. But I do think it's one I would want to get in winter. I do think I would wear it in summer and spring. So I feel like I would need to find it kind of now if I was going to, if I was going to find it. The next thing, and potentially the biggest trend of the year and apparently going on to next year is the colour red. Um, I love it. I have been saying for years, ever since I met the Thrifty Girls, we went thrifting. I think it may have even been the first time we met or if not the first time, like quite early into our friendship, we were charity shopping and I found something red and I was like, oh, I really suit red. And they make it fun of me all of the time. But I do, I suit red and I have no shame in admitting what I suit. And I really do suit red. Um, So when red became a trend, I was like, brilliant. I already know I look good in this. I already know it's a colour I feel confident in. Um, and I definitely started trying to find red more because although I thought I looked good in red, I find red quite a hard colour to find. And I don't know if maybe they're not making as many red clothes plus size or what it is, but I just don't see a lot of red. Um, and I don't know why that is. And obviously if I was shopping fast fashion, I could probably find loads of stuff red at the moment. But because I'm trying to thrift it, I am struggling to find lots of red pieces. Um, so I have my red leather jacket that I love and that I wear all of the time. It's one of my major staples. It's probably my most worn jacket at the moment because it's not too thick. Um, it looks nice with most things. It adds a pop of color if I'm wearing an all black outfit and I really love it. And then my red bag from Dogs Trust. I wear that again, all of the time it's such a nice size and it's just a really lovely bag and i think that is what got me into my medium bag era is that bag um and i love it i love it a lot but apart from that i don't own much red um but it's a color that i know i like and that i know i suit um and in terms of like accessories i've been accessorizing with lots of red ribbon and i've always been someone that likes to add a pop of red to an outfit um I wore a black and white spotty dress the other day and put a red belt on and put a red lip on and things like that. Like I like accessorizing with red and I feel like I always have done. Um, yeah, I feel like black, white and red were always something that I grew up knowing went together and wore it quite a lot. So when red became a trend, it was something that I was like, hold on a second, I can do this. I know I like red. Um, so that's quite an easy one. And a very easy one in general to find. Like although I'm not finding lots, it's probably because everyone else is buying it all before I get there, which is not good enough. Um, the next thing is kind of flower is it appliques flower chokers that whole thing where flowers were literally everywhere and this one i don't think is for me um i definitely felt myself getting influenced I'm like do i need do i need something flowery and i'm like no you don't i just flowers were never really my thing though i never really wore flowers um in terms of like 3d flower elements when big chunky things were in and it never really got into the flower trend um again i think it looks nice on other people i feel like it leans quite y2k and 90s which i do really like um but i feel like i don't know i feel like i don't have enough like pastel-y dainty pieces um to kind of incorporate then with like that flower trend so it's something i love again but not for me and then finally it's racing jackets um yeah absolutely love them can i find one no because they are expensive and my budget isn't stretching that far um there is one though which if you are looking for a racing jacket specifically the m m branded brown one you guys all know what i mean if you like thrifting the brown m m racing jacket stunning and i think it's helen and douglas charity i may be wrong on their ebay they've got one at the moment i think it's 75 which is really quite reasonable for one of them jackets but it's a size small and i've debated getting it but like it wouldn't fit me in the way i wanted it to so 
is something that I accept that I don't own yet. But I would really like a racing jacket. Would kind of like a Harley one. Then equally for like any racing jacket would be cool. Um, I like them when they've got quite bright colours on. But equally the M&M brown one is stunning. I'm probably my main goal. Um, it is something however I don't feel like I could style in many ways. I feel like the only way I picture myself styling that is like with a very plain outfit. And then a statement jacket. Um, so it's something I don't think I'd style in many ways. Um, and because now I'm playing around with lots of like layers underneath, um, I'm not sure then it would work like super seamlessly into my wardrobe, but I do think it would be a cool thing to just add on to any plain outfit and feel like you look put together and cool. So I understand the racing jacket height and I feel like it's again, one that's been around for ages. I think especially if you are thrifty, um, then I feel like it's something that will always stay in fashion because if you find one in the track shops like or thrifting secondhand, whatever it is, I feel like it's something we all keep an eye out for um, and would all kind of jump at the opportunity to have. So I feel like it's something that we've thought has been trendy for ages, um, but it's probably just got more into the mainstream. And on that note, I absolutely hate the fake remakes of these jackets. I went to a boot sale and they had the M&M one. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a dream. And I went up and it was like Chien and I was like, it was disgusting and it's so cheaply made and horrible. And I was like, no, I don't want the fake one. I want a real one. And they're out there. It's just about finding one for a price that I feel is what I want to pay. Um, but that's it. That's some 2023 fashion trends. Let me know if I missed any below that you feel like you participated in this year. And let me know your thoughts on these trends. Um, obviously, again, trends aren't something you have to follow. In fact, I feel like it's more fun if you don't follow them. Um, but then equally, I also feel like it's really fun to follow them, but only the ones you really like. Just take them all with a pinch of salt and think about the longevity of these trends and how do you love them because everyone else is wearing them or do you love them because you love them? And a perfect example of that, I feel like, is Crocs because I brought into them when they were a trend because everyone loved them. And I'd always hated Crocs, which is normally a sign then not to buy into the trend. But I love them. I love them so much so comfortable and although i'm trying to wear them less because they're they're not trend like they're not pretty but they are comfy but just something to bear in mind you could find your favorite thing by shopping trends um just make sure it's something you will love and cherish but that's it for today's video i really hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up again comment any trends that you followed this year subscribe if you're not already and i'll see you in the next one bye